Hey, what's up, gamers? We're reading the latest chapter of Dr. Stone, where, where our boy Sun Q is flying above a modern city street holding a game controller. And this is called King of Three Dimensions. So I'm assuming this is all about the drone. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty shocked <laughs> that they're, they're going to make a drone in the 3D world for the purposes of uh, the 3D world. I'm sorry, the stone world. For the purposes of spying on uh, the, the hunters and the harem and, and kind of being able to relay orders using their little mouth earpiece thing. Uh, okay, so, so what features does a drone need to have? It needs to be controlled remotely. This part is kind of mind-blowing. It needs to have fairly agile movement in three directions, and it needs to somehow be able to report back what it sees to the controller, right? All of those things I think are necessary for it to be called a drone and for it to be useful in uh, this situation. So even if he makes something that I don't think is technically a drone, if it doesn't have those features, really what's the point of it? So let's see. Uh, someone in the comments suggested a hot air balloon type drone. I think that's possible, but I, I don't know. I'm thinking it could be even more advanced. Okay, so Kohaku celebrating that infiltration worked, step one worked. She's shouting this amid being marched back to the harem camp. That's maybe a bad decision, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> so being the concubine of a master, I've never seen. No, thank you. So that's interesting, too. None of them have actually seen the master. I wonder if there's going to be some sort of twist there. I don't know what it could be. I don't know what would surprise us, because who else is really on the table uh, for, you know, like something, someone that could exist in the Stone Age? Unless it's like very clearly uh, the, the actual descendant of Sun Q's pseudo-father. Something like that, and then there's like, ooh, it's kind of like Senkyu's brother, like, he'll he'll be just as smart as Senkyu. That's how he made the petrification weapon, but I don't know, I don't know. Okay, it's just like, I, whenever they kind of build up a character like this, in any sort of shonen series, whenever there's a mysterious character that's mentioned quite a few times before they're revealed, I'm, I'm always kind of trying to tease out those possibilities. The scout, okay, some is just one of the master's guards. As convenient as we be, it won't get, we won't let her. Excuse me, we won't catch her sleeping alone. That's where infiltration plan comes into play. Wu thank you. Trying out the earpiece. How can you hear him through that earring? <laughs> I like that. Ginro kind of is like, ah, oh, yeah, I was there once too. I remember this, <laughs> but he like has no idea either. Like <laughs> he just isn't surprised by this anymore. So you already know the Kingdom of Science is splitting up. There's us, the science team, and you, the spy team. This war will be waged on two fronts. I like their little outfits here. This is really great. Ginro looks so cute. <laughs> Check this out. Ginro is, like, cross-dressing. And now he's cosplay cross-dressing. Like, he's, he's, like, cosplaying as Ginro Lita, or whatever his name is. So it's two layers now. And once you've gone two layers deep into your new identity, there really isn't any coming back as far as I'm concerned. But at any rate, <clears throat> mission is as follows. Serve them closely. When Mozu, Kirisami, and the other hotshots split up, do whatever it takes to lure Kirisami out and get her to toss the weapon. Make it happen. <laughs> I'm supposed to be kidding me. <laughs> so yeah, this is kind of interesting. I think one-way communication is kind of interesting from kind of like a game element. Um, there, there's a <laughs> so here's a fun little game theory problem, and it's somewhat similar to uh, there's like kind of the the famous game theory explanation of the game Chicken. So the game Chicken is where you have two uh, usually dumbass teenagers driving their cars together, but you don't want to you want to swerve out of the way. But if you swerve out of the way first, you're the chicken. So you know, it's it's just the game of psyching the other one out, trying to convince the other one that, you know, I'm not going to turn, you better turn, whatever. So the, the way to win at chicken, the way to ensure that you're the winner, is to demonstrably break your steering wheel, to, to just yank it out and lean out the window and go like, 
I can't turn. I can't. It's up to you. If you don't turn, we're both going to die. Um, so there's another one. Let me see if I can remember how this works exactly. It's like you and your, you and your friend, well, it's not going to be your friend for long because this is pretty devious, but you and this other person have both crashed uh, from an airplane. You're stranded in the woods. You both have walkie-talkies, okay? Um, and you're, you're some distance away from each other. You don't really know how to get to each other yet. Uh, and you know that if you just stay put, if you're the one that stays put and the other person comes and gets you, you're much less likely to be in danger than you would be if you're actually trying to make your way through the forest. So you want to be the one that stays put. You want them to be the one that moves. So therefore, what you should do is uh, break the receiver part of your walkie-talkie Make it so that you can only send messages and not receive them. And then be like, hey, I broke my receiver part. I can't hear a dang thing you're saying. I'm just going to tell you where I am. You know, there's no way you can tell me where you are. So I'm just going to tell you where I am and you're just going to get here. Okay, bye. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of gross. And if both people do it to each other, then both people are just super dead. But... Uh, if, if you can do it first and get your message that you've done it over to them first, you're probably going to be more likely to live than they are. Anyways, that's a little tangent. I just thought of it thinking about one-way communications. But yeah, this is as good as they get. The science team will swoop in and snag the weapon in midair. And here we see another illustration of what looks like a very modern drone. In fact, a drone that in many ways is more modern than many drones I've played with in real life. Uh, two of my older cousins have drones. They're both really cool. I messed around with it quite a bit. We're crafting the king of three dimensions. A drone. Oh my god, they're just really doing it. A controller, a propeller, a motor. Okay, they're, they're making a drone. <laughs> um, so the only thing I, I don't see this having is a way to relay information it's seeing to the, the controller. But I, I guess that's not so necessary because they're just going to situate themselves somewhere they can just physically watch IRL. But aside from that, yeah, it's got the 3D maneuvering. It's got the ability to grab the petrification weapon. So they go back to the lab. This is their little hideout for this arc. I, I think it's very cozy. Things that float all perfectly balanced. Do we need an attitude control system for that? Something that involves integrated circuit chips? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, he's not really explaining this too well. But it's true. It's not like the drones just have all of the propellers spinning willy-nilly. Uh, they're constantly calculating how fast each one of them should go in order to maintain stability. So, I'm getting so used to open something up. Perfect little brag, just what the doctor ordered. Motor. So this alone it would take all day. The motor works is stupidly simple, so you guys get the help too. And some copper wire and a piece of iron. Shoot electricity through. That gives us a magnet. Nice, nice. Yeah. Again, seen this one before. Turn this bracket magnet into. To, turn this. Okay, into a magnet too. Line the two magnets up just right. What do you think happens? The spinning, right? Because it's going to be polarized. So if you have like poles pushing against each other, and then it starts being attractive. But <clears throat> it'll spin so quickly that the momentum, I think, will... Or the way I'm describing it makes it seem like it's just free unlimited energy, so that can't possibly be right. There we go. He's pulling away like a boing and spins a little. The I magnet fins in the opposite position. The wires are giving out the opposite charge. Switch back to the original sides. There we go, there's the spin. So yeah, you need the electricity. So that's why it's not magic-free energy forever. Just starts spinning like mad. That's all a motor really is. Nice. A bunch of extra powerful magnets for all the propellers, which means I was wrapping those wires a few thousand times for all those coils. Yes, the old kingdom of science tradition, never ending back making labor. Of course, of course. We, we Ever since we unlocked the Handicrafts Club, and we unlock the massive manpower of uh, the full village. We haven't seen a whole lot of this. Because it's delegated now. SenQ can just be like, well, you 50 people over there. You do this. And then, you know, it just happens. 
But now they're kind of back to uh, methods being bottlenecked by uh, labor. So yeah, this will take a while. I, I hope the harem side can keep it together until then. Enemy stronghold where the master and others reside. Nice. This is kind of an odd shot. Uh, oh, I see. I see what's going on. Sorry, this is a spread. That's a, this is a really beautiful shot. At first, I thought it was kind of like a weird, sort of ironic that like like uh, Kohaku was seeing it as this huge, indomitable mountain, and then we cut to it, and it's actually just these kind of quaint, uh, cozy-looking treetop villages. But no, I see there in the distance what she's actually looking like. There's like a, a gigantic castle at the top of this tallest tree. And silhouetted here, I presume, is our master. There he is, I, I think. There's nothing greater on this island than my miracle powder. The fool of a statue just busted up, snuck in, and tried to free his daughter from the harem. Oh my gosh. So he's just punching statues to smithereens, people he's petrified. Bad people like that get ter <laughs> to terminated. Okay, so the master is actually a dumbass. Right? Hmm. Hold on. Koaku's got some sort of scheme here. But the master seems like a total dumbass. So clearly he wasn't the one that rediscovered the petrification power. That must have just happened incidentally or from some other person that we haven't seen or who is long dead or something like that. Because I, I can't imagine this master possessing much of a scientific intellect. You know, I guess I'm being stereotypical here, but it's really more the manga that's being stereotypical. Uh, the, the, this is the pattern that I've expected at least. So, Kohaku's plan. There's a reason I like quick defensive. This is our chance to scout while the place is a buzz over us newcomers. I need you to buy me 15 seconds. Okay, so in 15 seconds, she's going to just blitz around everywhere and try to figure out what's going on. Very cool. Kohaku is actually so cool. Man, all, all these characters. It's like, you, we see them in goofy moments, like, you know, probably two-thirds of the time. So we forget sometimes just how competent and skilled they are. Impressive. Whoa, she's... rubbing up. Sure, sure. Is, is this actually the master? I, I guess. Maybe not. Because, like, I thought he was the one that was silhouetted behind that curtain. The other guy was, like, worshipping or whatever. But now it seems like this guy is just kind of out and about, you know? That they're all just kind of welcoming, welcoming the uh, the new harem members, you know? And he's always gone about his miracle muscles and stuff. Okay, never mind, never mind. This, this isn't the master, I guess. I thought that would be more of a, a major build-up. Ginro is so disgusted that his face needs to be labeled. Okay, so, Kohaku wasn't wrong. I've never been more grateful for my keen eyesight and knowledge gained from the kingdom of science. What has she seen? Isami. Back in time, would you run off to? I found it. The key to securing our victory. It's a key of science. Whoa, what has Kohaku recognized? Before she was scouting out oil. Before she was scouting out, like, oil and certain types of plants... The kind of natural resources like that. So it could be something like that. Something she's discovered that's on this island that she thinks is going to be helpful. Seemingly for them, but perhaps for Senku's mission too. Not that she actually has any way to like relay things back to Senku. Um, what could it be? Key of science. Hmm. How on earth do I... Ah, so it is something she wants Senku to know. This only works in one direction. If only I had some way to communicate with them. Okay. Meanwhile, they're just playing with toy cars. I think they've just built themselves a toy car. <laughs> yup. <laughs> ah, this could be useful on its own as a means of communication. Ah, ha, ha. So it may look like they're just having fun while Kohaku literally puts her life on the line in three different ways in order to scout things out for them.
but they have maybe unlocked the way that she can actually tell them about such things. So, lots of little mysteries. We still don't know what's up with the master. I don't think. Let's look at how it's framed again. It's like, we see the fortress. There's these, this lovely spread. We see the one big creepy guy bowing down in front of the silhouette. Silhouette just looks like a big person. So then we saw this big person, and I was like, oh, is that him? Because also here in the top right, he's first shown kind of in silhouette, you know? But now that I'm looking at it again, it's like... I, I don't think they would do that. Like, I don't think they would transition from, like, ooh, how mysterious to... And then here he is! I think there's just some other guy. You know, they're just setting up quite a few, like, villains for this arc. In a very traditional shonen mode. And somewhat, like, shonen, I kind of see that maybe eventually we're going to square off that all of the good guys will fight all of the bad guys. In some capacity. Like, all of these guys are going to get their comeuppance, that's for sure. But uh, how will they do it? How is Gen going to beat one of these people. <laughs> um, I don't know, but I'm very excited to find out. It's not going to be so traditional shown in that they're going to just punch each other. That's for sure. All right. Good chapter. Let's look forward to next week.